Hello, my name is Roman. I am an Ivedian presale engineer, and in this video, I will be showing you um, the workings of uh, the Ivedian people uh, smart module. So, um, here we'll, we'll actually start with the settings, as this is the most convenient way to show you how the um, model is set up. Um, so, here we go to the detection areas, and here, before I go into any um, menus, I want to explain what this is. So, this module, what it does is it counts uh, people in an area and then makes uh, notifications based on the rules we have set up for the number of people in the area. So, to illustrate, uh, let's create a new area. So, we, we will add a new area. We will not re re rename it just yet. Instead, we'll go, well, actually, um, first, I want to show you that we can drag this area around. We can um, uh, change uh, its shape. We can add points. We can remove points. Do whatever we like, pretty much. So after we have an area we are satisfied with, we can go into rule configuration, and then we can select from one of four different rules. So essentially, here. Uh, the rule number one is uh, the system has to report whenever the number of people exceeds the set value. So this is something that is useful, for example, for monitoring queues. Uh, like if your queue gets longer than, say, five people or ten people, um, this will get reported and then you can act accordingly. You can monitor who has longer queues for uh, what periods of time. So number of people less than the set value. So this is something uh, that is uh, very useful for, say, construction sites uh, where there have to be at least two or three people present and accounted for at all times. Uh, doesn't really matter who sometimes, but you have to have that many people in, in the area. Next one is no people. So the system will report whenever the area is empty, whenever it has no people present at all. So this is something that's mainly used for uh, monitoring specific job sites and people present, meaning that whenever there are people present in any area, there has to be notifications. So this can be uh, something like off-limits zones where nobody has to be present ever at all, or it has, or it can be um, dangerous zones where people can be present, uh, but you have to uh, know about it and people cannot be present there for long periods of time. So for now, uh, let's select, let's select uh, the one where we can set a value and let's take a look at the options here. So number one, we can set the number of people. Obviously, this is disabled if we select from one of the latter options, but uh, for the first two options, we can set the number of people that this value has to exceed, um, so let's say three. Whenever there are more than three people in this area, the system will create a notification. So then we can also specify the uh, time before the system actually fires off a notification so that we do not get spammed. So let's say there's two minutes of grace period that uh, the system can use before it actually fires off a notification. Then we can uh, select the days of the week when we want the system to operate in. So we can select something like Friday and the weekend or re really any combination of days. So again, your needs for monitoring queues can be different um, during the um, working days compared to the weekend. And if you're monitoring the workplace and you only want to select days of the week when that worker is present. So if you have an empty office during the weekend, uh, you just select the actual working days. So the first five, Monday through Friday. So that way you don't get spammed with um, nuisance notifications. And then we can also set up a, an active period. So that's um, the time period um, in question. So let's say we begin work at uh, nine hours and we end at five hours. So if we do something like that, 
uh, the system will f fire off a notification whenever there are more than three people in an area for more than two minutes during the weekdays um, within these hours. So we hit apply and then we have this rule for this area. So we can save it and there it is. There is the new area. So, okay, I will remove this one for now and I will show how the event act events actually look what the events actually look like inside the interface that we have here so if we go to the events tab here we can select the actual areas that we want to monitor so obviously you can have lots and lots of different areas and if multiple areas are triggered at the same time uh, it will show uh, all of the areas that are triggered so as you can see uh, the red area, because of the way it's set up, it's triggered pretty much at all times because it has to report when there are too few people and it's located in such a, a space that there are no people present uh, pretty much ever. So it shows up uh, nearly constantly, but if we only search for, say, area 3, uh, this is this big purple one, uh, then we can actually see uh, the specific times when there, there were people in this area. So again, if I go back to the settings menu and I take a look at how that area three is set up, it is pretty much constantly looking for anybody present in this area. So here, again, we'll go back to the events tab. Here it shows us that there are people present for an hour from 2.55 p.m. through 3.59 p.m. So if I click here, I see uh, more detailed uh, data. I see the uh, duration, uh, the time where it all began, uh, the date of when did it happen, and I see the average number of people in the area and the maximum one. So uh, here what we have is all of the uh, snapshots that the system took, uh, essentially minute by minute, showing us that yes, uh, right now, uh, well not right now, but at 3.57 there were two people there, at 3.56 there were two people there, at 3.55 there was just one person there, but still. Um, so this is something to give us confirmation that the system is not wrong, we can look at each frame individually, and we can actually click them to uh, load up the video uh, to confirm that yes indeed, as you can see, there is a um, human head right here in the frame. So this shows us that indeed there are actually people in that frame. So the system is correct. Uh, so aside from that, uh, we can also filter by time frame. So if, if we want to take a look at something that happened uh, several days ago or a week or maybe even a month, we can do that easily. And the last thing that we have are reports for visitors and queues. So the reason uh, there are only these types of reports present is because these, this module was originally called IVDN queues and it was mainly, it was exclusively made for monitoring queues. However, we have found that it can be used in a variety of different cases, which is why we expand its functionality and we renamed it to IVDN people. So uh, that is it for this video. I hope um, this has been useful for you and I will see you in the next video.